and welcome to Crafting With You, where I bring you a wide range of crafting tutorials and ideas. Today's tutorial is a request from a viewer who wanted to know how to make a cardigan out of loop yarn. I was able to find two written patterns online, but they were not that great, so I took the best aspects of both, combined them into one, and came up with this pattern. If you're new to loop yarn, I highly suggest you start with a project a little more simple like a scarf or a blanket, both videos which I have on my channel, as this cardigan is a little more challenging than those type of projects. So without further ado, let's get started. The written pattern by size is in the description box, but I wanted to go over how to read the pattern so it makes sense to you. The foundation rope refers to the number of loops that goes across the entire width of your cardigan. Next is the knit number of rows height, and this measures from the bottom of your cardigan up to the bottom of the armhole. A person's preference for how long or short they want their cardigan could differ, which is why I left this as an open measurement. If you have a cardigan that you currently love, go ahead and take a measurement from the bottom of the armhole down to the bottom of the cardigan. Keep that measurement in mind, and as you knit your rows upwards, you're going to knit up until you get to that measurement. Next are the front panel. This shows how many loops across or the width that your front panels will be, and this decreases every other row. Then you're gonna have the front panel number of rows. So this is the height or the number of rows you're gonna knit upwards. The armhole bind number is next, and you'll see that more when we learn how to actually create that part of the pattern. And then you're gonna have your back panel. These are the number of loops that is the width of the back panel. And the last point is the sleeve. This is how many loops you're going to knit in the round and it decreases every other row. I'm aware that there are so many different body types out there. So along the way, we're going to do fit checks. And this is just going to ensure that what you're knitting up until that point is actually fitting onto your body. Okay, so now with that all out of the way, let's get to knitting. Start by counting out the number of loops you need in your foundation row. Of course, I can't do a big one on camera, so I'm going to do like a half scale model. So mine are only 30 loops across just for this video's purpose. Make sure that you start with a tail. If you don't have one, count out two loops and start with that third one. As you're counting your loops and you get to that last loop in your row, I'd like to mark that last loop so I know where I'm ending. And I like to use stitch markers. And these are mine. They're easily available on like Amazon or any type of craft store. And these are amazing. Just you hook this onto each loop. But you know what? If you don't have these and you don't want to buy them, you can also use paper clips. They totally work. So now that you've gotten and marked your last loop, you're going to start knitting. For your first row, make sure you're knitting in the right direction. So go ahead and take the last loop in your foundation row and then the first loop on your working yarn. You're going to thread that first loop from the back to the front, pull up. Then repeat this motion across all the loops in your foundation row. I'm finishing up my last stitch in the foundation row and then when I'm done with this, I'm going to take my stitch markers because I forgot to do this in the beginning, but I am going to mark the first stitch in the foundation row just so I know where we started from. So now we're going to keep knitting more rows. For the first row, we knitted from left to right. The next row, we're going to knit from right to left. So you keep alternating that direction as you go up. I've knitted a few rows so you can see what it looks like. Make sure that you're knitting up to the number of rows to match the measurement of the height you want from that armpit down to the bottom of the cardigan. This is also a good time to do a check to make sure you didn't miss any loops. Turn it to the back like this and see if there's any loops that are sticking out. If you have any, go ahead and undo it to that point, redo the loop and be on your way. At this point, we're going to do a fit check. Take that panel you've knitted up until now and wrap it around your torso and see how it fits. Remember, it shouldn't be tight. This is going to be like a cardigan fit. So if it's too small, try to go up a size. If it's too big, you might consider going down a size. 
We're now going to move on to creating the front panels. Look on the pattern and see how many loops width that your front panels are going to be. We're going to knit up and also doing some decreases so that it slants all the way up to the shoulder seams. We're going to start with a decrease. So take the first loop, stack it on top of that second loop, take the loop from the working yarn and thread it from the back through the front and then pull up and you've just did your first decrease. I like to then take a stitch marker and then place it right there on that loop to show me where I started my decrease. Then continue knitting across the number of loops in your row. Finish off this row and when you're done, go ahead and start the next one. This next row is just a one-to-one -one knit. There is no decrease. There are going to be eight rows height in total for the front panels and there are decreases in four of those rows. So it's every other row there is a decrease. This row is complete so I'm now going to move on to the next one and because we just did a straight row there last time, there is going to be a decrease. Take your first loop, stack it over the second one, take the loop from the working yarn, thread it through the back, pull it out through the front. Now go ahead and knit the rest of the row just like you would a one-to-one -one knit. For the front panel, the pattern will tell you how many loops width you should start with and how many loops you're going to have left after you complete all your decreases. When you finish your front panel, it should look like this. There should be a gradual decrease along that neck area. And now let's do another fit check. Wrap that bottom portion of your cardigan around your torso again and lay that front panel along your like collarbone neck area to see if the top of that front panel reaches the top of your shoulder. If it doesn't, go ahead and knit a few more rows. Don't do any more decreases and then you should be good to go. Creating the armhole bind is next. This is where your sleeve is going to be inserted into and we need a little more room on the bottom to make that happen. So we're going to take those four loops. So take the first two right there. You're going to thread the one from the left into the one on the right. So insert it, pull it through, and then you're going to do the same thing with the next two. Grab that one on the left, thread it through the one on the right and pull through. So you're going to do that with the four loops that are on that row. Moving on to the back panel, look at the pattern and see how many loops wide your back panel is going to be. I'm going to use a different colored yarn just so you can see some contrast in the different areas of the pattern. The first loop you're going to knit is the last one you just did a bind off on. For your working yarn, make sure that you leave one loop for your tail yarn. So go ahead and knit through and knit across all the number of loops you need to complete your back panel. When you're done with your row, go ahead and start the next row. This actually section is easy because it's just a one-to-one -one knit. There is no increase or decreases for any of the loops. So just go across and knit and knit the number of rows you need to match the number of rows in the front panel. You don't want those to be uneven. You want them to be one-to-one. -one. The back panel is complete. You want to do a check to make sure that you didn't miss any loops on the back side. And now we're going to move on to the other side. We're going to do the bind off just like we did right there. So the left loop, thread it through the right loop, pull through, left loop, put it through the right loop and complete your bind offs. The front panel on this side is going to mirror the other side. So our slant now is going to go in the opposite direction. The other side was this way. This side, the slant is going to go this way. So our decrease is actually going to be on the left side instead of the right side. I'm using a different colored yarn again so you can see contrast. So let's start. Take out one loop for your weaving yarn and we're going to start with that second loop. Go ahead and thread it through right there. 
and knit across the row until you get to the last two loops and then we're going to do our decrease so there we go you're going to stack the left one over the right one and then take a loop from your working yarn thread it through the back and pull through to the front I'm then again going to take a stitch marker and mark where I did my first decrease on this side of the panel. At this point, you're just repeating what you did on the other panel, on the other front side panel. You're doing a straight knit for that next row and then a decrease for the next, straight knit for the next, a decrease for the next. So just mirror what you did on the other side, making sure that the row height is the same as the back panel and the other front panel. Your back panel and your front two panels are now complete. At this point, I like to put stitch markers at the uh, shoulder area, just so you know where the top row is. So take your stitch markers and we're gonna put one here and here and on the opposite sides of that too. To create the shoulder seams, we're going to fold over the front panels like this on one side and do the same to the other side. So you're going to have the right sides together. So what you're seeing right now is the wrong side or the inside of the cardigan. You know where we did that bind off? We're going to use that as the midpoint. So that's where you're supposed to be folding it. It's probably easier to visualize how the cardigan is coming together now that you see it in this fashion. So you'll see that the front panels are right there. You see the back panel in the back. That's your shoulder seams and that's where your sleeves are going to go. To close off the shoulder seams, we're going to bind across the top. So across one shoulder seam through the neck and through the other shoulder seam. I'm now switching to my full scale model. This is actually my card again because I can fit this within my filming area. I place stitch markers on the beginning and end section of each shoulder seam so I can keep those groups together. So you're going to start the bind off. You're going to alternate between the front and the back loop. So this is your front. This is your back. Thread the front through the back. Now you're just going to alternate back front, back front. So here's the back loop. Thread through there. Take the front loop thread it through that one, and just keep going until you get to the end of the shoulder seams. That shoulder seam is now complete and we're gonna move on to the next section. The next section is a regular bind off, so just go ahead and perform that right across all the loops. Now we get to the other shoulder seam, it's the same thing. We're going to alternate between the front and back loops as we bind off. The shoulder seam bind offs are now complete. I'm going to place a stitch marker right here just so I know that this is the end of where my bind off is. This is what it looks like once the bind off is complete. And when I give this a turn, you can see how nicely and how flatly that seam sits. Turn your cardigan so the right side is now facing outwards. At this point, we're going to do another fit check to see how it looks on our body. 
It should look like a vest and when you put it on, make sure that the shoulder seams are sitting comfortably. It's coming down the armhole, it's not pinching up and the length is hitting exactly where it wants to hit on your body. Let's start knitting our sleeves. We're going to create loops all around the armhole area. I'm going to start on the left side where we have that bind off just so you can see how to get rid of that extra loop. I added a stitch marker right at this point so I know where the bottom middle of my armhole is. For this section, we're going to be knitting in the round, which means we're going to keep going in a circular motion. As we create our loops, you want to be sure that we're evenly spacing them out from the front to the back. So you can't have like, say for instance, you need um, 25 loops. You don't want to do 20 loops in the front and then five loops in the back. Make them even front and back. So get your working yarn and for this section, you don't have to leave any weave-in yarns. You could just start with the first loop. Go ahead and go down to the bottom or the middle of the armhole and you're going to start inserting the loop. And you see how there's two loops or two yarns right there? We're going to go on the inner one. Don't go through both yarns. Go through the inner one because it makes a flatter seam when you do it this way. When you insert your loops, make sure that you're going from the inner side of the armhole to the outside. There is a right and wrong way to insert these loops. So go inner to outer as you see right here. So then go onto your next loop and then go from the inner again through only one yarn, not the double yarn. Go through the one yarn and pull through. When you get to the top, you'll have that one extra loop because that's where you finish your bind off. This is how to get rid of that. So we're just going to add a loop right there. So when you knit through at the next row, we're just going to double up. I've created all my loops. So this is what it's going to look like. For that one section where I did the bind off, this is how I took care of it. I, Again, the double loop, just keep it together like this so that you know when you knit across, you knit those together. Here on the bottom, I have that stitch marker that shows you where the middle of my armhole is. I'm going to take that stitch marker off and move it onto one of the loops I created that is again going to mark the bottom middle of my armhole. Since we're going to be knitting in a round motion, it's nice to keep your armhole open this way so that we can go round and round and round. And as we're finishing each row, we're going to keep moving that stitch marker because the beginning of the row is always where we do the decrease. So you'll know whenever we get to that stitch marker, that's the end of the row and that's where the decrease has to start. Start your knitting. The first row is just going to be a regular stitch. There's no decrease or increase or anything of that sort. So just go ahead and start. Once you knit the first stitch, go ahead and move the stitch marker up into that loop so you know that is the start of your row. Keep going after that, just knit in the round, go around the whole circle. When we get to row two of the sleeve, that's when you're gonna have your first decrease. So stack your right loop over your left loop, take the next loop on your working yarn, and then thread through and pull up. The rest of the stitches in the row are normal, so go ahead and finish off the row. For the sleeve, there's a decrease every other row. So in the pattern, it'll tell you how many loops to start with and then how many loops you're gonna end up with. So here I did a few rows just to show you what it looks like. And you're gonna keep knitting until you get to the row where the last decrease happens. I completed all my decreases, and at this point, you have to decide how long your sleeve needs to be. Do a fit check at this point to see how many more rows you have to knit to get your sleeve to the area on your hand you want it to hit. Say that your sleeve hits that point and you need that much more length to your sleeve. Take that measurement, go against the sleeve and see how many more rows it takes. For me, it was three. So I added three more rows to the bottom of my sleeve. 
Here's the other side of my sleeve that's complete so you can take a look. I added two contrasting colors. You could do that or keep it the same. You're just going to bind off when you get to your last row. The last step is to add edging along the front panel and the neck area of the cardigan. Just like the sleeve, we're going to create loops all along that edge and you would think it's one to one, but it's not. The length of the loop going horizontal is not the length of a loop when it goes vertical. So you would have to do an increase in some of these loops and I'll give you the formula for doing that. We're gonna start at the bottom of the cardigan where we started our foundation row. So I'm gonna call it the left side. As we create our loops, we're not gonna go through those two yarns. We're gonna go through just one, just like we did on the sleeve. And that's because if you go through two, it becomes a really bulky seam. So we're just gonna go with one. Grab your working yarn, and if you have a tail on it, that's great. If not, go ahead and skip one to two loops. These are your weave-in yarns, and weave-in yarns just ensure that the yarn doesn't separate from the rest of the body of your work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an increase in the first row. So the formula is every three rows, it's one increase. So we're gonna start with one increase, so just put two loops through that one yarn. For the next row, we're gonna do one loop. And then again, one loop. And for the last one, another one loop. And then this next row, we're gonna do an increase. So insert two loops into that row. Follow this formula of one increase every three rows until you get to the top where you started your decreases. In this section, we're gonna do an increase every other row. So when you get to that first uh, row, go ahead and just do one loop. Don't do an increase yet. When you get to that second loop, that's when we're gonna do an increase. So go ahead and put two loops right here. And the next one, just put one, and the next one, put two, all the way till you get to the top where the shoulder seam ends. When you get to the neck area, it's just gonna be a one-to-one -one loop. Don't do any increases here until you get to the shoulder seam. And then again, you'll do the two, one, two, one, and increase every other row. When you get to this bottom section, make sure you're doing the increase every three rows. When all your loops have been added, it should look like this. And the next thing is to knit three rows across all these loops. I've knitted in my first row and now I'm gonna go back the opposite direction and knit my second row and then go the opposite direction and do the third row. So here are all three rows completed and now I'm going to go to the bottom of my cardigan because I'm gonna create loops across the bottom so I can do a bind off across this whole thing. Continuing with the working yarn from my last row, insert loops into the bottom of the edging. One loop for each row, so you should have three loops there on the bottom. From there, insert one loop into every two yarns and do this across the entire bottom of the cardigan. When you get to the edging, again, insert three loops into the bottom of the edging section. I miscalculated and didn't add my border on the bottom in the beginning, so don't be like me and if you want the border, add it in first. So when you're done adding all your loops, count out two loops for your weave-in yarns and then cut your yarn right there. We're gonna start the bind off, take the first two loops, thread the second one through the first, and then it's the repeat. Second one through the first, second one through the first. Just repeat this process across the entire cardigan so up the front panels across the neck down the other front panel across the 
bottom of the cardigan until you get back to where your first bind off started. Here's my last bind off and now I'm going to show you how to finish this off so it looks a little neater. What you're going to do is take the, the loops that you left at the end right there and you're going to snip that little string in between that keeps the loops together until you get one long string. So let's do a little snip here and then a little snip here. And then take that loop that you did the last bind off and then the first loop where you did a bind off and you're going to thread that through right in the middle like this and then take that tail end thread that through and then again thread it through the back right there and pull and then that gives you a really clean look at the end and then with that tail just weave it in on the inside anywhere you can I did an extra little decorative accent on my cardigan, so if you want to add it to yours, this is how you're going to do it. Pull up some loops through each row, and then you just do a bind off. How simple could that be, right? But it adds a really nice touch to the cardigan. And now your cardigan is complete. This is my sad attempt at modeling, so you can see what it looks like. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and easy to understand. This took a lot more work than I thought it was because the pattern was pretty complicated, but it turned out really well at the end. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Crafting With You.